Hi, welcome to Fight the Good Fight Ministries. We have got a great message this morning. We have Pastor Vic preaching, which I'm so happy. I love when my husband preaches. And I know it's gonna be a great message. And I know that someone out there is gonna to need to hear this message. So let's just go ahead and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that you woke us up, my God. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your love, your compassion, and your mercy, Lord. I just want to pray that the full armor of God is upon each and every one of us. I pray that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that no harm will come near us, my God. So, Father God, as I lift up each and every person there that is watching, my God, I pray for whatever it is that anybody is going through, my God. I just pray for them, Father. I lift them up into your care. We thank you for today, my God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we just wanted to remind you that we're also filming from home. So you might hear a clicking and a clacking. That's the doggy door and the dogs going in and out. But uh, you know, dogs spelled backward is God. So God's with us. So I'd like to invite Pastor Vic on up. Come on up, Pastor Vic, and we thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, listen, this morning, uh, first off, I want to just remind everybody, even though we are filming here at home, i just like to put this on to show a quick reminder that we do practice uh, social distancing and to wear your mask. The more we wear them, the sooner we open back up, praise God, okay? Yes. And we can get into our building and set up and have real church with more people, okay? Like my yes. wife says, we're filming at home right now, so we've got we just have our kids and our dogs here, Amen. and um, so you might hear, like my wife says, some clicking and clacking of the doggy door, some barking maybe. Uh, but yes. don't be distracted. Stay focused on the word, okay? So praise yes. God, praise God. Wear your mask, okay? Yes. So having said that, last time I spoke, we were uh, talking about. The full armor of God, praise the Lord, in Ephesians. Amen? Amen. So I wanted to go back and recap because wearing your armor, putting your armor on is one thing. And, and, and when I preach, look, I grew up as an athlete. I played football, baseball. Um, I wrestled in high school, took a year and a half, two and a half years of Muay Thai kickboxing. But I started boxing at a young age. So I refer a lot to either movies or sports in my messages. And I just think that in your preparation as a minister and a preacher and a teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the discipline of preaching this word is the same as the discipline you need to prepare yourself for battle. So isn't it funny that God always talks about, you know, uh, fighting Fighting the good fight of faith. That's what Paul, Paul talks about. Fighting the good fight of faith. David, David prepared and fought for, got ready for battles. Amen. So here in Ephesians, uh, it talks about putting on your full armor. Okay. Now as a fighter, there were certain things that we wore. We like, we wore a protector. Okay. Uh, uh, to protect our grown area. And then we wore headgears and sparring to protect our heads you know, so we don't get lumped up and bumped up too much uh, before a fight. And we wore boxing gloves. Now, as we prepare for fights, we wore, it depends on the weight, weight, weight divisions you were in. Uh, most of the guys like the lighter weights, they probably wear like 16s or 18s to spar in. The category that I fought in, the, from the light heavy weights all the way through the heavy weights, we wore 18 to 20 ounce gloves to spar in. So those are big, big gloves. And it was for a couple of reasons. One, to protect your hands. Two, to protect your sparring partner so you don't cause a whole lot of damage. Uh, and three, to your hands to get used to the weight of the glove because when we fought as a professional, let me just show you an example. So I'll be copying it out like this, okay? So these, these were 18 ounce gloves, okay? These were Reyes, the, some of the best boxing gloves you can get. Uh, I love the Reyes equipment, okay? So yeah. that's just, uh, I'm not plugging nothing. I just, uh, these were my favorite gloves. But here's the thing, 18 ounce gloves we used to spar with because when we fought, we fought, thank you, Gabriel. We fought with these. You can see the total difference in the size, amen? Yes. Okay, so the total difference in the size. These were like nothing. 
That's why you see a lot of guys get really cracked and knocked out. These things hurt, okay? So, but I bring these in to show you, look, we have, these things here are about 24 years old. They're not in too bad a shape, but you can see they've got some wear and tear to them, okay? Yes. So this is what happens after time, okay? It's no different than in the, the, the armor, when you put your full armor of God on. So I want to begin. Let's go back and just refresh, okay? If, uh, Ephesians 6, we're going to start reading from chapter, uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 10, okay? My wife, Shannon, is going to help me read... Um, as we as we move on a final word be strong in the lord and in his mighty power verse 11 put on all of god's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil okay stop there for a second okay so it starts off here it says finally uh, a final word be strong in the lord not in your faith not in you not in your strength not in your ability Okay, but you need to be strong in the Lord. Amen? Yes. So, and that's so important because look, with our strength, our mere strength, we cannot achieve anything. That's but in the right. Lord, that's right. come on somebody, in, yes. the Lord, in the Lord, we can do all things. Remember the word said that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So this is so important that we know where our strength comes from. Yes. And then it goes on to say that... Yeah. Um, Thank you, that we're going to go to battle. Thank you, Lord. Against evil presence. Yes, yes. Amen. Okay, Amen. so so let's let's go ahead and read on. Okay, verse twelve. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits okay see now listen listen folks listen we have this big thing going on right now with all the protesting and violence going on the streets there's just chaos everywhere amen yes. okay so listen we have to understand mm -hmm. not just as believers in christ but followers of christ come on somebody yes. we have to understand that this is not a physical battle against black versus white, against brown versus black, That's brown right. versus white. It doesn't matter creed, ethnic, or color. That's it's right. not against your neighbor. Yes. It's against the spiritual penalties of the unseen world. This comes from Satan himself. Yes. He is yes. causing, the best way he's going to win is to divide. Mm. Come on. Say it again, Pastor the Bear. Best, the only way he's going to win is if he continues to divide our cultures. That's we right. were all made in God's image. Whether you're white, black, Chinese, brown, Ethiopian. I don't care where you come from on this planet. We were all made in God's image. That's right. Why aren't we acting like him? Yes. Come on. Come Why on. aren't we acting like him? We have to understand where the battle comes from. As a fighter, mm. we understood the opponent. We studied. We had tapes. This is no different than any other sport, football. You know, I wasn't big on watching tapes because you know what? I always said to myself, and I said to my trainers, you study them. That's your job. My job is to fight. Okay? My job is to fight. Your job is to fight for you, your salvation, and your family. Men of God, you need to be in prayer and in battle all the time. Thank you. Against these spiritual things that are trying to sift your kids away. Yes. I don't know if you guys caught the morning show with my wife and daughter. My daughter was sharing about uh, being a pastor's kid. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy. No, Why do you think we right. ask? Pastors ask to pray for us, pray for our family. We're always in prayer for you guys. But to pray for the pastor, pray for your family, the, his yes. kids, because they're under a lot of scrutiny. They're under a microphone, um, a microscope all the yes. time. This is a microphone. Right. They're under a microscope all the time. That's right. And it should not be. Church, listen. Yes. Don't criticize and ridicule the pastor's kids. That just drives them out of the church. Yes. And that's what the devil wants. So we have to understand, we have to recognize uh, the battle that's, that's at hand, okay? So let's move on because I want to get into...
So I'm just, we're just recapping from two weeks ago. Amen. Amen. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're on verse 13, 13 in Ephesians 6. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Put on every piece of the armor. Every piece. Look, when we sparred in the gym to get ready for a fight, okay, we had to make sure we had our mouthpiece in. We had to make sure we had our protector on. We had to make sure that, you know, we had our headgear on or the gloves were, were right. You know, look, trainers were real technical about that, you know, and, and, and we, we had to make sure that uh, our protector was, was fitted perfect because we don't want no distractions during, during the workout. And even when we got ready for battle at the fight, we didn't have the headgear, but we had to have a protector on, and we had to have the right size gloves. The commissioner checks for the gloves. Plus, we had to have our mouthpiece to protect yes. our teeth, okay? Yes. There was no headgear to protect the brain. That's yeah. just the name of the game. But we have to be ready to go to battle. That's right. You have to be ready for battle, not just on Sunday, not just on Monday. That's Every right. day of the week, we're yes. in a battle. We, we're, we're at war constantly. Yes. It's for your salvation. Yes. Come on, somebody. It's for your salvation. Right. It's for your benefit that you're preparing yourself daily. That's okay, right. 14. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to go back one sentence that was still left in 13. Okay. That after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand firm. And then we go on to 14. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. And the body armor of God's righteousness. 15. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Amen. Verse 16. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. 17. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oh, somebody. Woo. Finish off with 18. Okay. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So you know what that means, folks? Listen. That means we need to continuously be in prayer. You don't pray once, twice, three times. Oh, well, it's not working. So you know what? I'm going to go burn down uh, the Walmarts. Right. No. That means, you know what? When it's not, it doesn't seem like it's working, continue to press in. Yes, pray. Maybe God. you need to pray Persistent. another half hour longer. We need to continue to pray, yes. pray, yes. pray. Yes. Look, you don't like what's going on right now? Election time is here. Everybody's talking bad about each other. But look, God's going to put in place who he wants to put in place. Amen. Regardless, pray for your president, for your governor, for your congressman, yes. for your police department. Yes. Pray. Pray. There's bad apples in Hallelujah. every... What a great word. Every place there's bad apples. There's bad apples in, in, in construction workers, there's bad apples in police departments, there's bad apples in fire departments, there's bad apples in Congress. Pray them out. Yes. Listen, you got a child that's dating somebody that's a bad apple, pray them out. Yes. I'm going to say it again. Yes. If you have a child that's dating or involved with somebody that you know is not godly, pray them out. Don't Woo. doubt what you ask God. Remember? Right. Don't doubt what you ask God. That's right. Pray it. In belief. So now let's get yes. back to the armor. Okay. So now we talked about putting all, we went over yes. all the armor of God. Amen? Amen. Okay. So now, as a fighter, I learned this long ago, and my wife could attest to this. And I don't know if my son remembered being in the gym with me, but every week I spent time, and I did what I call curing and protecting my equipment. Okay. So what I did here, folks, is I would take my gloves, I would take my protector, I would take my headgear. This is a headgear. You see the protector, Dave? This, folks, is the protector. This is what we put 
around our waist. Put our legs through, we strap it up, boom, put it on. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that too well right there. See, we wear it here, okay? But I would take each part of my equipment, every piece, and I would rub Vaseline and uh, baby oil into my equipment. You said, well, why would you do that? I would do it to the headgear, I would do it to my protector, yes. and I would do it to my gloves. And the reason why I would do that is for 24 years, 25 years later, they still look like this. See? Mm -hmm. Now this, in here, the thumb and inside, that's from gripping. That's from working out. This is what I spar with. But I use these all the time because I took care of my equipment. I took care of them. The gloves... I would take and rub in. I would put the gloves on my hands. And let me tell you something. I was doing this this morning as I was preparing for this message. And yes. I was like, oh my, I miss the feel of these gloves. Amen. See, that's without wraps. These are actual professional. I wore these in a professional fight when I fought in... Uh, Arizona on Showtime. It was 195 pounds. These hurt, folks, but you take care of them. And you, and you, what does it have to do with the full armor? I'm gonna tell you what it has to do with the full armor. That's right. Once you get dressed in the full armor of God, you got your helmet of salvation on, your breastplate of righteousness, your belt fitted with truth, your shoes, Ready for battle. You're all, you got your shield of faith. You're ready to go. You're in battle. Well, let me tell you something. Sometimes in battle, things get nicked. That's sometimes all the times. Things get nicked. Mm. Things get damaged. Mm. Sometimes your armor gets cracked. Yes. You have to make sure that you mend that crack. The devil is so sneaky and so conniving mm -hmm. that he looks for every little crack yes. to seep in, to get in. That's right. As we used to say on the street, the devil wants to catch you slipping. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's the true. devil wants to catch you slipping. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. On the streets, that's a big deal. But it's even a bigger deal when it comes to your salvation. Yes. It's even a bigger deal where it comes to where you're going to spend eternity after you live this earth. Don't let the devil catch you slipping. You've got to mend your armor. You've got to check your armor daily. Not just when you not just put it on, but before you put it on. And you know what? I did some studies and, you know, it showed back in the day, like when David, when these guys, when this was written, when, the, when they, were, they were talking about putting the full armor on, these guys went to battle. Mm. They never removed their armor. I talked to a lot of Vietnam vets. They said that the battle was so intense that a lot of times that even when they slept, they slept in their, their gear. They slept with their boots on mm -hmm. and their rifle. They even named their rifle. They would sleep with it in their arms. They were ready to get up and go to battle. Mm -hmm. But every chance they got, they checked their equipment. They checked their canteens. They checked their their their, their uh, rifles, their bayonets. They checked their helmets. They checked everything they had when they had the chance to do it. Are you checking your armor? Because let me tell you something. The enemy is checking it for you. Thank you He's man. seeping over your armor to see where he can get into. You, Folks, man. we need to. This is this is death. Look at look at the world today. All you need to do is watch ten minutes of the news. 10 minutes of the news, and you're going to see where we're at in the book of Revelations. Yes. You want to get a real reality check? I challenge you this. Read some Revelations, start studying Revelations, and watch about 15 minutes of the news before you go to bed, and let me know how you sleep the next mm -hmm. day. Listen, if you're not grounded in the truth, if you're not grounded in the Word of God, the devil is looking 
at your cracks. Okay? You need to fill the cracks in your armor. That's right. You need to check your armor. I check my equipment and I deal with my equipment when I used to box. Not just to protect my opponents right. because or, or my sparring partners because I didn't want to hurt them. They were there to help me. That's right. But to protect me. When my gloves started getting soft, look, these things might look good to the eye. Oh, my bag. I just dropped the chair at the table. They might look good, but look in here, they're, they're all... So I had to switch my gloves out because the knuckles were coming through, so that causes damage. That hurts. Yes. So I wanted to protect my, my hands. Yes. My wife could attest. I have I've even fought with broken hands because... I have real hands, I find a big division. But right. you have to protect yourself at all times. That's the rule. When they get in a fight, they tell you, protect yourself at all times. That's right. Listen to the reference command and protect yourself. Well, listen to God's commands and protect yourself. Not Vic, Pastor Vicks. God says, protect yourself at all times. Yes. Protect your mind. That means being in your word, folks. That means being in prayer. Yes. There's challenges daily. That's I get right. challenged daily mm. at work. I'm challenged daily. Yes. Whether, look, it's, you have to understand it's not the people. And I tell myself, Pastor Vic, understand it's not the people. It's what's behind the people. And you won't, you'd be surprised how many believers that are used by Satan to get under your skin. Oh. I've got people right now that spreading rumors talking bad about Pastor Vic. Oh, say that again, Pastor They're Vic. They're talking bad about me. Woo. I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know. But I don't care. I don't. Because I know the truth. God knows the truth. And That's God right. is what sets me free. That's the truth right. sets me free. That's right. So whatever the problem is, it's their problem. That's I've got time to deal with it. I got wife and kids that I need to be concerned about. Yes. Not Thank that you, gossip Father. out there. Thank you, Father. See, not that God. look, and people are upset with me because you know why I'm so unfortunately I'm not their ethnicity. I'm who God made me. Yes. Okay. So you know uh, it is what it is, but uh, we're going to press on with God, Amen. We're going to fight the good fight of faith, and we're going to gear up with the full armor of God, and we're going to be ready for the yes, battle. That's right. We're going to be ready for the battle. Thank you know, I deal with customers every day at Sprouts, you know, which is the deli there. And I love what I do there because I get a chance to minister to people. Praise God for right. that. And you know something? Mm -hmm. When the enemy comes, I have to love them and kill them with kindness. And sometimes it's hard. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I get on my boots, you know. My, uh, 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 what do you call that, uh, my brain just gets a little fuzzy sometimes. I'll just put it that way, okay? Yes. So my parsley fires off the wrong way or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, basal ganglia. Basal ganglia. My wife is so quick to remind us. Praise God for her wife. Save me, man. But uh, listen. Thank you, Lord. We have to really get back. Yes. God's large and he's in charge, folks. That's he right. loves you, okay? So, you know, and, uh, you know. Thank you, No Father. matter where God sends me, no matter what he does. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, folks. That's right. As long as we stand on His word, okay. This is the truth right here. This is our this is our uh, weapon right here. This is our sword. This yes. is what we use. Yes. See, every word in here kills the devil. It drives him nuts. Just speak God's word. You want peace in your life? Speak God's word. You want That's peace right. in your marriage? Speak God's word. Say you it. want peace over your kids? Pray God, uh, speak God's word. Say you it. want that ungodly person out of your daughter or out of your son's life? Speak God's word. Say it. Come on, somebody. See, I, I don't like preaching a sermon, and I feel like I'm at a, 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 a funeral. Or a funeral. You know? Come on, church is alive, baby. Yes. Come on. I don't care where you're preaching from. I don't care where you're at. I don't care. Look, we're in a house right now, and the Spirit of God moves. People are alive. Yes. People are alive. You know we need to respond. I love an active congregation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So Amen. look, when we open up, we get our building, yes. you're going to come visit Fight the yes. Good Fight Ministries. 
Bring your voice. Bring yes. your excitement. Because Thank look, you, we Jesus. don't want a dead church. Come on, That's there's right. enough there. You want to go to a dead church? Go to a funeral and preach over there. That's right. Or go to a cemetery and preach over there. That's right. Okay, I don't want to preach to a bunch of dead people. I want to preach to the people that want to be lifted up and, and be brought alive. Yes. I want to preach to the Lazarus out there that people consider them dead. And you, you know Lord. what? We're going to speak life and bring you life. Thank Amen. You, so look. We are so excited about what God's doing in our ministry. Yes. And I was uncertain when, what we were going to share, what we were going to do. But listen, we're going to just ask that you keep us in prayer. Keep my family in prayer. Uh, I've been called to an assignment. And praise God. It, yes. you know, listen, God says he will fulfill the desires of our hearts. Amen. Amen. And I'll be gone for a couple weeks, you know. Uh, but praise God, I got my son Gabriel here. Uh Raising him up for our youth pastor. I got Tucker here, you know, raising him up also. Uh, one day he's going to be uh, an evangelist preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But my wife will be taking over with the, uh, the ministry. Um, pastor Charles, God bless you. Thank you for yes, uh, pastor Charles. stepping up and, and helping us out in our ministry. Well, during this time, that will be gone. Thank uh, you, Lord. So, look, keep us in prayer. Keep the family in prayer. We got to wear our armor. We got to yes. secure our armor. Okay, I don't want to get off of my own thing. I want to just keep it the Word of God. Yes. Secure your armor. Make sure it's polished. Make sure you look good on the battlefield. But most importantly, make sure your cracks are filled. Yes. Make sure you can be able to see. How do we see the enemy coming? By discernment. Yes. God gives us discernment. He gives us eyes to see. That's he gives right. us ears to hear. We yes. don't want to just yeah. hear with this. We want to hear with this. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you've made mistakes, that's okay. That's okay. I make mistakes all the time, folks. But know this. God sees your heart. Yes. Praise God for that. Yes. Praise God that he sees our heart. Yes. Look, there's a lot of men and women in this book that, that, speaks, uh, that it speaks of that they weren't perfect, but God used them. That's right. David being one. Yes. Moses being another one. Yes. Paul God. being another one. Come on. Mary Magdalene being another one. Mm. Come on, there's plenty in there. God saw their heart, yes. their desire. Is your desire to serve Him? Mm. And maybe you're watching today and not really knowing of this God that I speak of. Or maybe you once were there and you've fallen away. That's okay. Those that have fallen away, remember, the Bible said God's married to the backslider. You're the back, you're the prodigal. That's Come right. back home to Papa. That's right. And if you want to know this Papa that I'm talking about, all you got to do is a couple things, okay? Good. Number one, admit that you're a sinner. And those of you that have fallen, admit that you've fallen. You've, you've fallen away from, from the Father's house, okay? Admit that you're a sinner. Recognize that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin. Mm -hmm. He's the Son of God. And that he was crucified yes. for you. He hung on the cross and died for you. But also acknowledge the fact that three days later he rose again. And now that he sits at the right hand of the Father. To intercede on your behalf. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and, save, Lord and Savior. Come back to the Lord. Receive him once again because he'll receive you. His word says he's faithful for that. He'll receive you. And then wherever you're at hearing us, get into a Bible-based teaching church. Something that's going to teach the gospel. Not what they want you to hear, but what the Word is. Make sure whatever you listen to, you align it up with the Word of God. Go back. Take notes. Go back and study. Make sure it all lines up with the Word of God. And if there's anything that you hear that, that, that doesn't come across right, feel free to contact us. Yes. All the information is there on, on, uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Check us out on, on YouTube and uh, hey, hit the like button, subscribe to us, and we do all these other videos. But listen, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, if you admit that you're a sinner and believe that he was sent from God and hung on the cross and was raised three days later, and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, we believe you've been born again. So continue to search out your salvation. And like I said, feel free to contact us. Yes. Uh, we got some great videos coming up. My wife and uh, kids are getting uh, doing the uh, morning show, yes. uh, Monday morning morning show. So, um, hey, check us out. Let us know what you think. 
And know this, God loves you, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. We love you guys. God bless you for Fight the Good Fight Ministries.